Welcome to the Bible Balance Healthcast, episode number 422. Three out of four women don't get treatment for menopause from their doctor. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Menopause is a phase of a woman's life that rebuilds the glass ceiling and keeps women from successfully competing with men after the age of 45. That's a quotation from Dr. Maupin. <laughs> it's one of her pet issues because, she, as she was telling me, when she was in medical school learning to be a gynecologist, which is the the specialty that we all assume handles women. I mean, any medical issues that women have, first thing is you go to a gynecologist for that. <laughs> and in her training, as she remembers it, her entire gynecological training had three hours Three hours of, of credit or three hours of time spent? Three hours of time spent on menopause. On menopause. Three hours. Which I mean, I had more time spent on pessaries, which no one even knows what that is. It's peccaries? Pessaries. Pessaries. They're like little devices that hold uteruses up. I was going to say are little up. animals. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, but, you know, that's three hours. Here, give them estrogen and you have to give them Provera, Provera and see you later. Yeah. That was it. And nothing about the symptoms, nothing about other ways you could treat women's problems. I, today... So what did you learn in medical school? When they're, when they're menopausal and they say, Doc, what's wrong with me? You say, well, you're getting older and you're screwed. And you need to learn to live with it. Oh, but I can't go to work. I'm exhausted. I can't sleep. I have hot flashes. I'm miserable. I'm yelling at people. I'm depressed. I'm, I, I can't, I'm not myself. Then they just said, tough. Yeah. I mean, basically, That's learn... the way women are. Learn to live with it. And that was what most women who come to me have been told, yeah. unless they were one of the four that actually got care and treatment from their wonderful gynecologist. But I have to tell you, we had to go and learn that stuff ourselves. I went into a practice where when I started practice right out of residency, I inherited a practice from an older man who retired, and all his patients were over 55. Yeah. And I knew nothing, nothing about menopause. I had to go research. I had to go read things. I had to ask all the doctors that I knew. 60-year-old woman comes in and you, and you say, you can't be pregnant. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah. Because we spent all our time on learning surgery, learning obstetrics, how to deliver babies, emergencies, going to the emergency room for an ectopic pregnancy, doing, I mean, huh. we learned all of those things, cancer, cancer that women get, but None of those things does every woman get, but menopause, every woman who lives long enough gets menopause. Yeah. So what are the symptoms as a physician that you've learned to look for it, to, that says a woman's menopausal or starting to become menopausal? Because sometimes the whole menopause thing lasts 15 years or more. Menopause is forever. Even more than 15 years? <laughs> yeah. When you're, menopause is usually between 45 and I, so I recently had- post-menopausal? Well, they use that term, but that just means that you've entered menopause. You don't ever stop menopause. Menopause means you've stopped having periods. You no longer ovulate, and you're not fertile. So you're no longer so, a breeder. Right. So your your quality, uh, importance to society has less. Has just dropped. Okay. And because that's what women used to be right. um, required to do, have the children take care of the home, we still sometimes live in that same world. It's really, it comes crashing back every once in a while. Even though we have jobs and we have careers, what happens is we're doing great. We're on the track to, you know, do what we want to do, get the job we want or be in the job we want or, God forbid, run a co company or a country. And menopause hits. Well, All that, of a that sudden, term that we use, glass ceiling, mm -hmm. I mean, it used to be a reference for younger women who are trying to build careers, mm -hmm. and companies would pay them less money mm -hmm. and give them less responsibility right. or, or refuse to hire them because or they, they would didn't say, let them you're going to go home and have babies. Hitting the glass ceiling meant you couldn't go any farther than this. Exactly, because of that reason. Mm -hmm. 
So now that's sort of changed, mm-hmm. and and we have we just had over a hundred women elected to Congress, mm-hmm. uh, and, and there are a number of women that run major corporations, mm-hmm. I and mean, the, the society is changing its image of that. But your comment was, there's a new glass ceiling that's being constructed mm-hmm. when medicine refuses to learn what it needs to learn to teach doctors what they need to know to treat about women that menopause. are menopausal. Right. Okay. And that all women, if they live long enough, will become menopausal. Right. And and menopause is generally thought of as, I stopped having periods. And then I started having these symptoms. Okay. So, and it usually happens between 45 and 55. So, so what are the symptoms? So, so the symptoms are no periods, hot flashes, dry vagina, painful intercourse, uh, bladder incontinence, uh, like you're you're like working out as usual, and all of a sudden you lose urine because you don't have any estrogen to help your bladder. Um, osteoporosis, hair falling out, especially in the front, um, aches and pains all over. Night sweats. Night sweats, mm-hmm. and then we get to the other hormone that's involved in your ovary. Your ovary is failing, meaning it's dying. Now men never have so this. Which hormone? Is for these first ones. So the first one's estrogen, lack of estrogen. And the okay. second hormone that actually starts going down long before the estrogen is testosterone. So when testosterone drops, we lose our brain, we can't think, our assertion goes away, our motivation to to do more at work and home goes away, our sex drive's gone, orgasms are gone, we can't sleep, no rest, fatigue. We We basically are a different person. That's kind of more the personality. We're miserable from menopause and we lose our, our drive and, and everything with loss of our testosterone. So so basically, we'd got no training on that when I was in residency. And they still don't really train people on that because my daughter did family practice and didn't get much on menopause So either. then do, do obstetricians and gynecologists, which often are combined, mm-hmm. When they get these women who are coming in their menopausal, do they send them to an endocrinologist? Is there some other specialty uh-huh. that... No, they just say, you got to live with it, or here's a little estrogen for the vagina. But it's interesting. That's one of the biggest things is painful intercourse, because they want to continue to keep their marriage intact. Right. Even if they don't want to have sex, they will, but it's painful because there's no estrogen. So the treatment is to give them estrogen to put in the vagina topically it won't become something that Probably goes meaning a local application a local application spread. that will then make the vagina wetter and stretchier and so it doesn't hurt when they have intercourse that's an interesting thing when i started 30 years ago you used uh, an applicator full every other day and that was fine and that worked and now they keep dropping the dose and my favorite my most unfavorite phrase is lowest possible dose of estrogen because the lowest possible dose of estrogen doesn't cut it. It is, it's not going to get you where you want to go. So people get this lowest possible dose of vaginal estrogen and they go, hey, that didn't work. So they think estrogen didn't work. When they, their whole body needs estrogen. If you have not had breast cancer, your whole body needs estrogen. If you have had breast cancer and it's estrogen uh, receptor positive, then you can't take it, but we can give you testosterone instead. But women need their estrogen to stay intact. If we took every man's testicles off at the age of 45, we'd have a bunch of guys that sat around drinking beer. They do this anyway. But not going to work, drinking beer, getting fat, and and sleeping all the time. And then when our our, uh, gonads go away, we're supposed to live with it? I mean, that's ridiculous. So we have to have what we need to get through this, but no one's training anyone. This article was in the AARP uh, magazine, and it had a six-page article with lots of of examples about the fact that OBGYNs and family doctors are not trained in menopause, and soon half the population will be over menopause because we're living longer. Yeah, so the article in the ARP magazine uh, had the following statement. The American College of OBGYN has no requirements for menopausal training, even though both written and oral exams to become an OBGYN require OBGYN require hundreds of hours of training in surgery and obstetric procedures. Women over the age of 45 are not of interest to the only specialty that should and could train erudite hormonal experts, 
that would guide all women through the change. So that's the conclusion of the art magazine. And they had run, they, because this question arose for them, they contacted the, the training universities and colleges for uh, gynecologists. And they interviewed the doctors who were graduating and then went around to residencies and mm -hmm. interviewed those doctors and said, did you have any of this training? Do you feel that you're adequately prepared? Are you qualified to, to treat women who have these conditions? And they got an overwhelming response from, in, I think it was in excess of 90% mm -hmm. of the doctors said, we didn't have any training. I don't feel prepared. I'm not qualified, but I've got these patients. So I have mm -hmm. to do something. Right. And so it's the blind leading the blind. Right. So, so you have to do extra, you have to put an extra effort out to learn this after you're out of, of residency. Now, most of the time you have an older doctor in your practice. That's not the case anymore, but that's how I started. So I'd have to ask the older doctor, so what do you do for this? And what do you do for that? And interestingly enough, he had women... We, he didn't. He didn't use pellets, and he had women come in every week on a Friday, and he had injection day. And everybody came in for their estrogen injection and their testosterone injection, two injections every week. They'd show up at the office, and they were just happy. They didn't have osteoporosis. They were living their lives. They could go to work. But what a hassle to go in every week to get your hormones. Mm -hmm. But that was his answer to it, mm -hmm. and so he taught me a lot about estrogen dosages and testosterone dosages. And, and that's where I learned it. I did not learn it from residency. And if you go into a practice with people your own age, I'm not sure how you learn it. Yeah. Because that's, that was just from him delving into research. Well, too. it would be trial and error. Patients right. would come in and present and you would have to try to do something to see what would help their symptoms. So, so for people, so doctors who have the personality of, I'm not going to try anything new. I'm going to do exactly what I learned. I am only going to do what's accepted by the American College of OBGYN. They'll just say, nah, I don't do hormones. And that's easier for them. Yeah. They don't want to step outside of their, their safety area. And it may be personality-wise or it may be time-wise. It takes a lot of time to talk about hormones. We have visits in the office to talk about hormones for an hour. So they don't have time in their schedule that's paid for by insurance that is discounted to sit there and talk for an hour, they have 15 minute appointments or less. Well, so, let's run through some of the facts that support the argument that this is a real problem for a significant number of people and that we need to do something about okay. it. Right now, one out of three women in America is menopausal. Mm -hmm. So the population is aging and that number is going to increase. Mm -hmm. The article said that by 2020, which is not far from now, two years, mm -hmm. 50 million women in the United States will be menopausal. Those women need medical care. They need doctors that know what they're doing to help them so that those women can live healthy and functional lives. I contend it's just as important as getting your blood pressure t uh, uh, treated Yeah. to get your hormones replaced. Right. Because it affects everything. The loss of estrogen without replacement increases the onset of heart disease, Alzheimer's disease, dementia, and diabetes, which is of epidemic proportions in the United States. And all of these diseases are going up since the false WHI study in mm -hmm. 2001 came out and scared everybody. And then they came back and said, oh, well, we were, we were wrong. They retracted it. And retractions are always not looked at as thoroughly or as excitedly by the media uh, as, as uh, scare research. So it isn't true that estrogen causes heart disease, that estrogen causes diabetes, it saves you from those diseases. Right. They were just, uh, they were wrong. They were wrong. And the people that have conducted the research have come out subsequently and said, we were wrong. Right. But, the, but everybody still remembers the fear. Right. And doctors who are busy and don't want to talk about hormones use that as an excuse to not talk about hormones. So they keep perpetuating the fear when it has in fact been retracted. So other facts, the majority of women lose their sex drive and that negatively impacts their marriages after the age of 40 because they lack the hormone testosterone, which the College of OBGYN does not even recognize today as a female hormone. That's right. That's an amazing fact. Yes. Well, they didn't recognize PMS until 2000 and we all knew people had PMS in the 1980s. 
Well, maybe <laughs> it's because the journal that they read, the Green Journal, mm -hmm. OBGYN, <laughs> reads has 75% of the articles in the journal are focused on obstetrics. Mm -hmm. That's right. And the rest are about procedures like laparoscopy, HPV, infections, endometriosis, and all the diseases that young women get. Right. The magazine that every OBGYN reads to stay current on new things and new trends in their specialty mm -hmm. doesn't have any articles on aging women at all. I have every once in a while you'll get one, but I've taken that mm -hmm. for 30, I've continued 40 to take years. that. I've taken it for yeah, thirty eight years. Yeah. Since I've stopped doing OB, the last eight years, I found almost nothing that I can use. So I this year I just decided to stop taking it. It's not worth it. Yeah. It's just all about obstetrics and I don't do obstetrics. You don't do obstetrics I just anymore. take care of hormones. Yeah. So then the last interesting fact that I wanted to make before uh, mm -hmm. in 1908, women were expected to live to the age of 51 and didn't have to worry about menopause because that's when menopause begins. In 2019, a woman's life expectancy is around 85. That adds a significant amount to their life. 35, almost 35 years. Almost 35 years for the average woman. Mm -hmm. And medicine uh, is not remodulating itself to be able to deal with this. You'd think that they'd figure it out by now. Yeah. 1800s to now. To now, but they haven't. And, and a lot of the problems that we have mm -hmm. that with females and with males is the the trip switch of losing your hormones or having them drop to a level that is too low for you to function optimally is what starts us aging and makes us sick. And then if we don't replace those, we, we say this all the time, but all the diseases of aging, diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease, all of those start rolling in. And then we end up not able to take care of ourselves with too many medicines. Well, the, the fact that the College of OBGYN still does not recognize testosterone as a female hormone is relevant because Dr. Maupin and I have written a book called The Secret Female Hormone. It's been out for about four years, and you can get it on Amazon or you can get it through mm -hmm. our offices. And we now have also written a book that will be coming out in January for men uh, called Got Testosterone. And in those two books, we explain the reasons that medicine historically has not, medicine as an institution, historically has not embraced hormone replacement therapy, still fights and struggles with whether or not to do it and how to do it and what's the appropriate way to do it. We explain all that. We explain the symptoms that you would experience if you have a hormone deficiency. We explain the treatments that you can get if you have a hormone defici deficiency. And the goal of all of that is to say that as you age, these women who are menopausal and have 35 years of that to contend with, and men who are getting older and have 35 or 40 years of that to contend with, do not have to live the rest of their life in pain, dysfunctional, handicapped, because their Unable bodies wear pain. out and they can't do the things they want to do. So check our books out. See if that helps you uh, with your decision-making process. And then find a doctor who will provide this for you. Yes. And you can ask when you're making an appointment, does this doctor provide menopausal hormones? And their front desk will either go, no way, or... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on oh, in. Oh, sure, come on in. Yeah. You know, so you can find this out. And and make sure that they know that's something on your subjects that you need to, to ask them about. So they'll change the time for your appointment, hopefully, or at least or give you an appointment just for that. Yeah. So that you can um, that you can actually live your life well and not just long and miserable. Basically, that we want people to be well, and we want people not to be in nursing homes and not to be taken care of by their children. And and Walkers. our generation should be the first generation that can take care of itself. Yeah all the way through the and not go to a nursing home because we're sick yeah. or our bones are broken. As always, thank you for listening. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. 
find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.